If I asked you who the greatest Marine in One Piece was, what would you tell me? You'd probably say Garp the Hero. But let me ask you a question, another question. Who was Garp the Hero before Garp the Hero? Well, his name was, and still is, Kong. A former admiral, a former fleet admiral, and current commander-in-chief of the world government. Holding a position second only to the Five Elder Stars, and I suppose Emu, but shh, no one's supposed to know about him. Kong is a strange character, because his narrative role and his in-world role are completely disproportionate. When you take into account physical strength, as well as political and bureaucratic influence, Kong is potentially the single most powerful and influential human on the planet. And yet, in one piece, he's appeared in a grand total of three pages across two chapters, one of which isn't even in the manga. One of them was chapter zero, the canon Strongwell chapter tie-in. But as always in One Piece, we know much more about Kong than his time on screen would dictate, because it's very hard to keep quiet about someone of this massive legendary status. Kong was first fully shown to us in chapter 594, Message, and he was introduced as the world government commander in chief, a position previously unknown to us. Also, his office is massive. You don't really get the sheer scale of it until you see the wide panel. But if you look, not at all carefully because it's huge, you will see Kong's aquarium, which features giant sharks, eels, a whale, and even a kraken. It's an office so large that only in manga could two people have a calm conversation, because in reality, they would both need to yell from other sides of the room, which to be fair, Kong is very used to, as his first actual appearance was in chapter zero. You can see him silhouetted yelling at Garp, a popular marine pastime, as Sengoku and Sakazuki would both go on to learn, yelling at Garp is part of the fleet admiral job description. Because at this time, 27 years ago, Kong was the fleet admiral. Although there is a slight translation issue, in chapter zero, his position is translated only as admiral instead of fleet admiral. However, it was later confirmed that he was indeed the fleet admiral, which leads to the pretty crazy question of just how old is Kong? And the answer is very. We can estimate Kong's age by the standard generational gap between fleet admirals. For example, our current angry boy in charge is Sakazuki and he's 55. Meanwhile, the former much more calm boy in charge was Sengoku, who is 79, which is a year difference of many. With that same generation gap, we can estimate that Kong is potentially in his late 90s, if not over 100 years old, which is insane considering that he's still actively employed with the world government. And he looks pretty damn good for a 90 plus year old man in chapter 594, but this isn't too unusual for One Piece. We do have abnormally old human characters like Dr. Kuroha, who is allegedly 141 years old post time skip. And Oda did say in the SBS of volume 56, that the life expectancy of a normal human in this world is about 140. So with that in mind, Kong is practically just middle-aged. Now I should say that other than Dr. Koreha, we have yet to meet another human who is over 100 years old, which would make Kong the second oldest known human in the series, with his biggest competition being Haridas, who is 99. If you don't remember him, he's the Wadaria guy who always goes, oi, 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 oi that guy. But to put age into some perspective, Dr. Vegapunk is only 65 years old. Two thirds, roughly two thirds of a Kong. So the path of a One Piece character seems to be spending about 50 years as a regular person and then living out another 90 years as a geriatric. Weird fact now though, we know that Kong's birthday is on May 9th. And that's important because May 9th is Goku Day in Japan. This is because the date 5-9 can be read as Goku. So it became Goku Day in honor of Dragon Ball. Goku notably being an alien monk Monkey, and Kong is one in a long line of primate-based characters in One Piece, including one marine literally named Gorilla, because Oda loves his monkeys even when they're also dragons. But Kong's ability to greedily hoard units of age makes him a fascinating character, because it means that he comes from an era of One Piece that we know shockingly little about. Assuming he signed up in his early 20s, a rookie Kong would have been a marine 80 years ago, roughly around the same time when Sengoku, Garp, and even Goldie Roger were born. He lived in a world before the birth of its greatest heroes and its greatest villains. And weirdly enough, the most we know about what was going on in the world at the time comes from the isolated nation of Wano. Kozuki Sukiyaki was born, the Kurizumi clan lost power, and their systematic purge began. As for what was happening outside of Wano, ironically, complete mystery. Meaning that Kong belongs to a largely unknown and practically ancient generation of Marines. Garp, Sengoku, and Suru all joined the Marines around the same time, which was 56 years ago when
when they were in their early 20s. And this would place Kong in his late 30s, early 40s at the time of their enlistment. Meaning that by now, a man with his innate gifts would have worked his way to the top. We're talking Rear Admiral or even Vice Admiral rank, maybe even Full Admiral. Although the ages are a little bit inconsistent with the Marines, you can't always judge a career progression by age. Because to have Vice Admirals like Smoker reaching that position as early as 34, but then two ranks below him at Commodore, we have Brand New, who is 56. But to be fair, most of what Brand New does can be summed up by graphic design is my passion, because he assigns and prints all of the bounty posters. That's it, that's his full-time job, so Commodore may very well be his skill ceiling. But even for the very best, many Marines would end their career at the Vice Admiral level, because the criteria and positions available to become an Admiral are incredibly harsh and scarce. But Kong was one of the rare few to rise above all and become one of the three Marine Admirals, together considered to be the greatest military might of the Marines. It's very likely that Kong had been promoted to Admiral by the time the God Valley incident took place, which was 38 years ago, and it meant that Kong was very much a leader during the most terrifying era this world has faced in recent history, which was the reign of the Rocks Pirates. By this point, Garp was 40 years old and almost certainly a Vice Admiral, and as powerful as Kong was slash is, it definitely says a lot that ultimately it was Garp and Roger who had to bring Rocks down, as opposed to Kong and his two other Admiral counterparts at the time. Kong even makes this admission himself during one of his rare appearances where he says to Sengoku, you two, referring to Sengoku and Garp, have led the Navy since the days of Roger. Actively admitting that even though he was an Admiral slash Fleet Admiral, the true leaders of the Marines during a huge chunk of his time were Garp and Sengoku. His subordinates had eclipsed him. Skipping ahead to 27 years ago, the Battle of Ed War was when Kong was well into his tenure as a full-on Fleet Admiral, with established command over the single greatest power in the world, which means that he was 100% a Haki user. All Marines, Vice Admiral and above, need basic observation and armament mastery. However, Kong may very well have been a user of Conqueror's Haki as well, just as his successor Sengoku is, and Sakazuki may be. It's currently not confirmed, but I'd be very surprised if he wasn't. It really is a requirement to operate at the top levels of the world. There's also a question as to whether or not Kong was a Devil Fruit user, and at first, and I suppose only glance, he seems more along the lines of Garp, someone who has taken raw strength well beyond standard human limits. He could very well be a fruit user though. Muscles and magical fruit aren't mutually exclusive, but something that Kong is unlikely to get a lot of credit for in the fan base is his sheer intelligence, primarily because it's all obscured by his insanely thick with so many seas muscles. Being Fleet Admiral means having the ability to command complex battles and even extended wars. It also means being able to navigate politics to some degree, having a delicate approach to balancing the hundreds of world government nations' interests. So you don't give this role to the guy who just punches things really hard. What's more interesting to think about are who exactly were the three admirals working directly under Kong at the time? Well, of course, we have confirmation that one of the three was Kong's eventual successor, Sengoku the Buddha. He was an admiral when Shiki attacked Marineford. And depending on how you look at it, another candidate could be Black Arm Zephyr. He was the main antagonist of Film Z, and he was a couple of years younger than Sengoku. So he's about the right generation, and even though it's technically non-canon, he was a former admiral. The problem is that even if Zephyr was canon, his window as an admiral is very short. He became an admiral at age 38 and retired four years later after his wife and son were murdered. He then became an instructor during the exact year when Borsalino and Sakazuki joined the Marines. But timeline-wise, even if he was canon, Zephyr could not have been an admiral when Shiki attacked Marineford. So Sengoku had two mysterious strengths among unknown counterparts. It couldn't have been Borsalino, Sakazuki, or Kuzan because all three of them were shown as vice admirals in more recent history. Kuzan and Sakazuki during the Ohara incident, and Borsalino was still a vice admiral up to at least 12 years ago when he defeated Arlong in the Fisher Tiger flashback. And while he's been brought up, fun fact, Kizaru and Kong have the same voice actor in Japanese. His name is Unsho Ishizuka, and he also voices Zoro's mentor Koshiro, so he's like the go-to old man actor. As opposed to Kong's English voice actor, Jim Feronda, who also voices Bariette, so he's like your go-to monkey actor. However, Bariette in Japanese is voiced by Kape Yamaguchi, who voices Usopp, who once shot Kizaru, who is voiced by Unsho Ishizuka, who also voices Kong, and there we go, we, we brought back things around Kong. Kong would eventually fade from global prominence though, and the popular thought is that Kong retired following the execution of Goldie Roger. I mean, what better time you capture the world's greatest criminal and your career ends on a high? But that doesn't work for two reasons. Firstly, it's likely that Kong retained his position for well over a decade after Roger's execution, because Sengoku was still an admiral during the events of Minion Island in Law's flashback. So up until very recently in world history, Kong was the man in charge, and had been for anywhere between two to three decades. And the second reason why it's wrong is because Kong never retired. 
he was promoted. Because Fleet Admiral is not the pinnacle. At the very, very tippy top is the Commander in Chief, a position that is second only to the Five Elders and I suppose Emu. Kong's Commander in Chief office is even located at the Holy Land of Marijuana, thus making Kong one of the extremely rare non-world nobles allowed to live there who isn't a slave. I'd say that he may have been made a world noble or like an honorary world noble thanks to his century of service, but I get the feeling that it doesn't quite work like that. You either need the celestial bloods or you're, you're nothing to them. Nothing. Much like the Fleet Admiral, the Commander in Chief job is still to oversee the entirety of the Marines. However, this position now also includes oversight over Cypherpol, which the Fleet Admiral has no jurisdiction over. Basically, Kong is the man in charge of every armed force in the world government. And in the real world, that would also include things like the Air Force or the Army. But in the One Piece world, technology hasn't gone far enough to have an Air Force yet, and there isn't enough land in general to warrant a ground army. Prior to their dissolution, Kong also had theoretical direct authority over the Seven Warlords. I say theoretical because Kuma aside, no one could control them. And in fact, in the case of Doflamingo, he was the one controlling the world government. But that aside, the Commander-in-Chief position is primarily lots and lots of paperwork, because the more power you have, the more accountability you have, and so the more writing and signing and stamping that it is that you need to do. And assumedly, Kong still holds the Commander-in-Chief position to this very day, because when Sengoku retired, he was assigned the Inspector General role, which is in charge of investigating corruption within the Marines. And this may actually tell us a fair bit about the kind of man that Kong is, because the impression I get of him is that he was genuinely trying to help the world. He took great pride in the Marines, but not the sort of really extreme pride that Sakazuki does. Plus, he and Sengoku very much saw eye to eye. However, the fact that Kong lives at Marijua may demonstrate a higher level of tolerance or even appreciation of the world nobles that Garp, Sengoku, and even Sakazuki definitely do not have. And even though he is one of the most minor characters in the grand scheme of the story, he is still by far one of the most important people in the grand scheme of the world. Again, his narrative role is completely at odds with his in-world position. Currently, Kong is a more powerful man than Sakazuki. He is the pinnacle of progression with the Marine organization, having transcended them and becoming the closest a standard human can ever become to a world noble. And also, he has really cool hair. I'm loving the triple spikes and the matching beard. Mate, don't you even try to tell me that he isn't one of the most powerful characters in One Piece. Although if you do try to tell me, then try to tell me in the comments below, which I may or may not read.